Hi guys, it's eBird Online and I'm here with another review from 90 Day Fiancé and it's Season 7, Episode 3, What Am I Worth to You? And in this part of the review, I'm going to be covering Emily and Sasha and Michael and Juliana. So much the same as yesterday, I'm going to focus on the most interesting couple, which I think at the moment is Michael and Juliana. So first up, we're going to go with Emily and Sasha. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe. Guys, I'm getting so close now to 15,000. Please help to push me closer to my goal and click the red button and subscribe. Also, please don't forget to follow me on Twitter and my handle is mbird99. So first up, Emily and Sasha. And we catch up with Emily and serial cheat Sasha in hospital and Emily's getting ready to give birth. She's been having contractions for many hours now and she's screaming like a banshee and strangely enough I don't dislike it it's actually a refreshing change from her being dizzy and nauseous and nauseating so Sasha's in the hospital with Emily and he says usually when his children are born he's working and that Russian fathers don't tend to hang around in maternity wards but he's there today because Emily's Russian apparently isn't great and I gotta tell you Sasha looks extremely stressed and at one point you see him calling her family to let them know what was happening and to give them a progress update. Emily helpfully explains that the Russian nurses don't speak English. Emily, why would they? They're in Russia treating Russians. It's you who should speak Russian when you're in their country. And honestly, when she's explaining this, I kind of understand why she doesn't speak that great Russian. And she starts speaking like a young child. They don't speak Russian. And because they don't speak Russian, I don't have time to think about it in English and then translate it to Russian. I just don't have time to think. Oh, Emily, as if you think. And at this point, we're seven hours in and the doctor asks Sasha, does Emily want an epidural? And Emily asks, will it slow the baby down? Only if it won't slow the baby down and it won't make my contractions weaker. And the Russian doctor confirmed that neither one of these things would happen. And I can't help but wonder, are you related to Putin? Because you and I both know, Doc, that that's not true. But nevertheless, Emily elects to take it anyway. And she gets a tiny prick in her back. Makes a change, guys. Makes a change. Oh, but what's this? There's trouble. It seems as if the baby's head is stuck in the hip and they're going to need to do a C-section. So Emily's whisked away to another ward and everybody puts scrubs on and then the doctor starts to make his incision. And honestly, watching the doctor make that incision, I half expected the camera to pan up and for him to have a cig hanging out of his mouth because he did it in such a lackadaisical way. And I gotta tell you, I got quite worried. But finally, the incision's completely made and they pull the baby out. And baby comes and it's a boy. And I have to say, guys, he's quite the beauty but I can tell by looking at him that he's already more mature and more reliable than Sasha and I put good money on it he's the only boy in the room that's not going to leave Emily and so they cleaned the baby off and wrapped the baby in swaddling and gave the baby straight to Sasha and Emily was watching but I would have been so stressed out if they gave my baby straight to somebody else and he was stressing out a bit because he didn't cry straight away so as much as I'm moaning that this is a boring storyline I completely hate to admit it but it did turn out to be quite engaging. Finally, Emily gets to kiss the baby and then she tells us after 10 hours of labour, David Alexandrovich is born and I'm still in total shock that she can actually say the name. And that's where we leave Emily and Sasha this week. Baby Dave, as I'll be calling him, needs to find himself down to the American Embassy as soon as possible because he'll need a passport to get home. And next up, we have Michael and Juliana. So I have to make a very quick disclaimer. I may well mention the statement that Michael made to Juliana last week, just so you know. So we start off the segment with a flashback to last week and we see Michael sitting in the back of a taxi asking Juliana, are you offended that they called you an escort. Michael, it's really no matter. We know that you are. And last week, when he said, when you're with me, you're a rich American, but when you're not with me, you're a poor Brazilian, was the most offended that Juliana has ever been. And being called an escort is a walk in the park after that statement. So we first see Michael and is sitting with his lawyer, discussing Juliana's case. And the lawyer said it was unsurprising that they accused her of having a less than wholesome profession because she's young and South American. Oh lawyer, you forgot that she's far too beautiful for you Michael and extremely poor yet models worldwide. So I spoke to one of my good friends last week who's a model and I told her the whole story of Juliana and Michael and she is utterly convinced that Juliana is not a model because she said as soon as you hit 17 you're on those runways and you're making quite good money. Now she's not that tall, I think she's about 5'9 so she's not the tallest of models but she's a great print model. She's done lots and lots of big campaigns and she's done lots of worldwide travel and she tells me even the worst crappiest job will give you 10 grand English 
And so that's about, well, ten and a half grand American. <laughs> yeah, we know the pound's terrible at the moment. But she also said that she's very likely not an escort. And she said lots of these girls that work for agencies, the agencies just more or less pimp them out onto these boats and to parties and fashion parties. And the girls just try as hard as they can to get with the rich guy. So it's kind of like Anastasia Day on a yacht. And it sounds a far superior premise because I'm guessing you can't be contacted by the Caesars of the world. And your catchment is probably usually very rich. So yes, the outcome of that was she's definitely not a model, but she's almost certainly not an escort either. And my friend says you make far more money from these really rich guys than you ever could so why would you do it and you know what I make her right but it matters not now as Juliana has her visa and she shows Michael online and Michael books on to the very next flight to the US of A Michael tells the producers I'm really blessed that this is all happening and we're really lucky that life throws all of this cool stuff at us Michael's absolutely obsessed with saying the word cool in previous episodes he said I do anything to do with the wine industry that's cool he said I've got a cool watch and a cool car and cool guitar now usually the eBird would say if you want to be something you speak it into existence if you want to be funny imagine yourself funny if you want to be unbeatable imagine yourself as fearsome and strong and if you want to be cool well imagine that you're cool and that you're doing cool things and that you hang around with cool people whatever we want guys we can speak into existence we can speak into being however no matter what you do no matter who you sleep with no matter what you've purchased michael you will never ever be cool it's just not down for you you're a fully fledged bona fide quintessential nerd that's just the way it is give up on trying to be cool and the very next scene sees michael demonstrate why he will never ever be cool michael has rented a hummer limousine oh michael he doesn't even know the parameters of being cool he doesn't even know what's involved michael thinks he's cool by depriving some 18 year old spotty kid of her ride to the prom that in michael's eyes is being cool and then michael tells the producers the helicopter was out of his budget and then he winks and he had to wink of course because he needed to explain to us that really nothing was out of his budget but michael all that then really means is that you were too tight to get a helicopter or that your garden was too small to land a helicopter take your pick either either way it ain't cool so he meets juliana at the airport and he has a scrappy bunch of flowers but juliana walks in looking like basically the sunshine and it's fair to say that each week she gets prettier and prettier i don't know how she does it and they run towards each other and they wrap their arms around each other and they're so happy to finally be together and it would have been a really touching scene but michael was in it and as they get outside michael shows juliana the hummer and she immediately goes to her insta and she tells everybody flowers and a limo i'm so lucky i wouldn't call it luck juliana your boat race is solid gold and i figured this life was what god had intended for you and whilst juliana was busy on her insta michael emailed a few of his mates on myspace <laughs> Oh guys, I know I'm going over the top, but like I, yeah, I can't take to him. I really can't take to him. And I'm also trying to amuse myself through what seem to be quite dire storylines. I don't know if it's just me, but this isn't gripping me whatsoever. And they get into the limo and as they're riding along, Michael's showing Juliana the sights. This is New York. This is the Empire State Building. This is the Chrysler Building. Where's Times Square, Michael? Where's Times Square? And then Michael strikes again. He looks at Juliana in front of the cameras and said, let's make a porno. Let's make some limo porn. And poor Juliana looks really embarrassed. And she looks straight at the camera. And she's like, Michael, stop. And I just think, what is wrong with you? Literally, what is wrong with you? Just last week, your girlfriend was accused of escorting and she more than likely wasn't escorting. But you doubled down on that accusation when you say, let's make a porno in the back of a limo. And at this point, I feel like Michael's just showing off. If he could be Hugh Hefner, he would be, but he doesn't have that kind of cash. But I definitely think that Hugh is his idol. And the truth be told, I'd like it if Michael was Hugh Hefner as well, as he is now. So in the back of the limo, Michael festoons Juliana with gifts. And he brings out the hideous necklace from last week. You know, the one that the jeweler was trying to get so many precious stones into so he could charge Michael more and more. Juliana lied and said, it's beautiful. It was not. It was yellow and green for the Brazilian flag and then red, white and blue for the stars and stripes. And it looked like a Rubik's cube had just puked up. And Juliana tells us she can't believe she's finally here and she can't believe what she's achieved. She said she was a seamstress and that they were very, very poor and they used to go around collecting bottles for money. Do you get paid for bottles? Bottles of what? Maybe milk bottles. 
and she said it's the biggest thing to ever happen to her and she hopes it works out. Juliana, don't worry, God is shining on you. I truly believe that. And as I was watching the show last week, an old university friend came round and Juliana, he is literally in love with you. And he said that you're his perfect girl, present company accepted. And so if things don't work out well with Michael, I've got a property magnate from London who's worth a good few million and he'd be willing to take you on, just so you know. And guys, he genuinely asked me to say that on this video. Just just in case. And Juliana tells us she's looking forward to American customs. She can't wait for Halloween and Thanksgiving. For my English subs, that's Harvest Festival, without the cans of beans and without the old people. But she's worried about looking after the kids. Don't worry, Juliana. You needn't be. They'll be looking after you. And so they arrive at Michael's house and Juliana discovers that Michael lives like a trump. And it seems that our Michael is somewhat of a hoarder. There's boxes and bric-a-brac literally everywhere, rammed into every corner. And I don't understand how you'd have your house in such a state when you know that the cameras are coming. Maybe he thinks it's cool. And finally, Juliana meets Cece and Max and they both take to her like a duck to water. They think she's really pretty and they tell producers, it proves she's a model, she's so gorgeous. And Max said, dad's a very lucky guy, a very, very lucky guy. And then he looks somewhat embarrassed. I think it's fair to say that Max has probably got a crush on Juliana along with the rest of America. And Max has been doing his research on Brazil. And he tells Juliana, we've got a whole breakfast for you, including avocados, but I understand they're a dessert in Brazil. Juliana is so surprised at how super smart Max is. And the truth be told, so am I. He really is such a bright little button. And I'm not quite sure how old Cece is. I'm figuring like eight, maybe nine. But she cooked the whole of the breakfast, sausage and eggs and avocado. And she also baked a cake. And they all sat down together to have their first brunch. And Michael tells us he's been living two separate lives. He has a life with the kids and his life in Brazil with Juliana. A couple of lives, Michael, I think are quadrant of lives. You've forgotten your life as a pimp and your other life as a nerd. And Michael goes on to say that he thinks his whole family, including his ex-wife, will all be one big happy family. I don't think they will. In fact, I know they won't. And just to prove me right, we see a trailer for next week and his ex-wife Sarah is saying, Juliana, what I want from you is for you not to parent. Don't worry, my love, she won't. She'll be too busy playing. And that's everything from me for these couples. So as usual, please put your comments down below Below. there's two things that I've taken from this one is that Michael wants to prove in some way that he owes Juliana and that she'll almost do anything he says his comment last week which was despicable and then the porno comment this week kind of says yeah she'll do anything I say we know that not to be true but he's trying to offer that as a possibility and I do believe he wants to say I've bought her she's mine she has to do what I say Michael she really doesn't and the other thing I'm going to take away from this is that the ex-wife is going to be even more jealous than I first imagined. And to some extent, I do feel for her because Juliana's not just the younger girl. She actually is beautiful, but she's also got a really beautiful personality and a sunny disposition. She's always smiling and she's a very positive person. It would be virtually impossible for those kids not to like her. And I think that's gonna be a problem for the ex-wife. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, please. And don't forget to make eBird a very happy eBird. All you need to do is press that button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be back tomorrow with my final video for this week. You've been listening to eBird Online. Ciao for now.